Well, joining me this evening is Sylvie Herford, and she has written the most fabulous book. It's called More, M-O-R-E, Allergen-Free Recipes for the Whole Family. Sylvie, good evening. Welcome to the show. Good evening, Kai, and thank you so much for having me. Now, as I mentioned to you before we started chatting now, is it, it the, the sort of thing, the blurb that goes with the book, it says it's the perfect book for managing your children's allergies or even preventing the allergies altogether. Why is right. that? What is in this book that's going to do that? Well, the essence of the book is that it, it, it excludes the five main allergens. Obviously, there are all sorts of things that people are allergic to, but the five most common main allergens are wheat, dairy, eggs, fish, and nuts. So what I've done is I've excluded those ingredients from all the recipes. And the wisdom at the time of my children having been born was that they had a highly allergic profile, giving their fathers and my allergic profiles. And that if we kept them off those particular ingredients for the first year, um, that the child would then mature, the gut would mature, and we would delay or, in fact, completely prevent the onset of allergy, which is what happened in the case with my children. So the thing when you, people hear about, you know, well, you're going to have to take all those things out of the food, we're going to end up with this very bland-looking plate of food, <laughs> which is yeah. actually not the case at all. Well, I think the thing is we all rely heavily on cheese. I think especially when feeding children, we're like, oh, we're going to give them some vegetables, just chuck on some cheese. And I've actually mentioned in the book that that's always sort of my acceptable way of serving food. But what I've done is try to include whole foods, um, ingredients that are interesting, and then, you know, beautiful herbs and spices and things that really kind of zhuzh up the meal as opposed to it being very bland and boring. And if you look at a lot of Mediterranean cooking, it actually doesn't include dairy. It doesn't include wheat. So it's actually, you know, take some of your inspiration from there too. You've actually, the, the book itself, it, it covers pretty much every type of possible food your child might want to eat or even you might want to eat. <laughs> Exactly, yes. <laughs> well, we had to eat it too. So. <laughs> well, yeah, there's no point in cooking for the child and cooking for the family separately. So, you know, that's the, yeah. what I liked about the book was, as I said to you, as well, I mean, there's things in here that I thought, well, I have got no small children with allergies. I don't have any right. allergies, but I don't see why I should be depriving myself of what's in this book. So, you know, <laughs> well, I'm delighted <laughs> to hear that. Going Karen. to be making loads of these things. They looked absolutely fabulous. Thank you. Yeah, I know they were. I mean, we, we, you know, I developed all the recipes myself and, um, you know, we made the food over and over and over again. And uh, Warren Heath, who did the photography, obviously did the most beautiful job of making it look as delicious as possible. And, um, yeah, it, 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 is, it is delicious. And, um, you know, one can always tailor things according to your personal preferences. I don't think that recipes should be, you know, finite. You know, if you want to add more garlic, go for it. If you want to chuck in a bunch of coriander, do it. You know, it's there, there. It's a, I like to see it as a working document. <laughs> the thing I liked really about this book, I mean, it, it mentions talking about, you know, trying to do, either managing your children's allergies or preventing the allergies from occurring altogether. But looking through this book, it is so bright, it's so vibrant that it really it would encourage children to come along and want to help you in the kitchen and possibly learn how to cook a few basic things. I don't think you could leave them alone in the kitchen, but just I mean these these. Well, my thirteen year old son would disagree with you. Well, um, well, if they were younger than that, I wouldn't leave them alone. But thirteen, I would yes. But I mean, these pictures are enough to make the children want to go and make it themselves. Well, I think that, yeah, that, that was something that, as I say, I didn't really set out to do. Um, but as the book evolved, so and also with the inclusion of my children in the pictures, that I realized with beautiful design by Matthew Ibbotson that it really was actually quite lovely for kids to, to look at it and want to, be, want to be part of the whole cooking process, which I think is very important for them. I believe firmly that, that uh, children should eat the same food as adults. I believe that they should take part in the preparation of food. And it's interesting for them. And I think it empowers them too. So what is your favorite thing in here? I know that's always difficult because there's so much in here. But, I mean, what would you say is your favorite section, let's put it that way? Mm, there are so many. I'm just trying to think of what my absolute best is. I think I'm incredibly pr pr proud of the breads. I mean, the breads oh, turned out just beautifully looking well. At that. I absolutely love, love them, although they're a complete pain to make, especially the potato one. But I do say that in the book. <laughs> um, and then from the, from the visual point of view, I think the star-shaped fruit salad is just so pretty and so sweet, and there's such a lovely picture of Rose next to it. I, my, I think my personal favorite is probably mush, because it yes. reminds me of my childhood. I was reading about that. It's, it's something about your dad or something. He used yeah. to do, tell, tell us the story about the mush. 
Well, mush was something that, that started in our family, and I think initially it was if you were sick, you got mush. So the basis of mush, mush was an onion, and then a whole bunch of vegetables which were mashed together, and then a little dollop of marmite was put into it, and this is what you ate if you were sick. And I loved mush so much that I was given mush if a babysitter was coming over, and I was given mush if I had an exam to do, and I was given <laughs> mush you know, for, if a boyfriend broke up with me. Um, mush was just, mush is my comfort food. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, my, my children are mortified. And mommy, how can you call something mush in your book? Said, well, because that's what it is. And I mean, this is, it's so simple and the kids will love this because, you know, especially given the name, I think the name ev- evokes this whole kind of, <laughs> it's not really food, it's mush, you know, so mush, how, to get, how, to get your kids, how to get your kids to eat vegetables in one fell swoop, you know? Yeah, exactly. Make mush or Call a smoothie. Or a smoothie. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, that, that's, that's the thing, you know, you, you have to sort of, try and encourage kids was one of the things that they most of them will just about have a nervous breakdown about is the fact they might have to eat a vegetable or two you know or, it's or interesting it, that, that whole vegetable thing is quite interesting and what i decided was when i started you know getting my children solids and introducing new foods and things like that i thought i would take a completely neutral approach to all the food that I gave them. Because I think a lot of the whole vegetable thing is parents being terrified that the child is going to turn down the broccoli. So it's almost like they're, they're, you know, they're like horses. They can smell your fear. Yeah. <laughs> so when you approach them with a, with a plate of vegetables or a plate of broccoli, they're like, mm, no, I don't trust this one. So if you do have the courage of your own conviction that it is delicious and you present it in a very neutral fashion, then sometimes the children actually don't have that response to vegetables. I was very fortunate. Mine didn't. Yeah, I was very lucky too. Mine seemed to devour salads and vegetables. My friends hated me, but my son yeah, loved salads, salads and vegetables. And when they they were sort of yeah. trying to coax the child into eating just just a taste of a tomato, yeah. mine was asking for extra salad. You know, so. Well, I know. Isn't that wonderful? Doesn't it make you feel terribly smug? Oh, it does. It does rather. <laughs> yeah, me it too. does. Yeah. yeah, I don't know so what ha- I don't know what happened, but he just seemed to like it. So I wasn't yeah. going to argue about that. I thought, well, it's fine. Just keep eating it. I also used to make Absolutely. patterns. I used to make people out of the veg- out of the vegetables. So the cucumber yeah. slices were the sort of the eyes, and then we'd have the carrots were like the oh. nose, and I'd make a plate that looked like a You're person. A good mom. No, I just a- make mush. <laughs> well, I didn't know about mush then. You see, Sylvia, you didn't tell me about that then. <laughs> I didn't tell you about. She should have no, called me. I, told I should you have much. told you. I should have called you. The one thing I liked in here, which I thought was such fun, were exploded apples. And it's uh, so simple to yes. make. Yeah. Tell people about making exploded apples. Exploded apples are just so stupidly easy. It feels, that's the whole thing. It's a lot of these recipes are mm. so easy. I feel like I'm cheating. I've got imposter <laughs> syndrome. Um, <laughs> very easy. And if I remember correctly, you call the apples. Stuff them with raisins and cinnamon and a little bit of sugar or xylitol. I'm not anti-sugar, but I do put xylitol in as an option. Bake them, wait for them to explode and serve them. I mean, how simple is that? I know, and they are so delicious and they smell so good. The smell of the cinnamon is so delicious. If you want to be fancy, you can put a cinnamon stick in just to show off. Oh. And I mean, they are just beyond delicious. Okay, if we have people who are thinking about this, you preheat the oven to 200 degrees right, Celsius. You and then and then you pop them in, and, pop and they them are in. just they are as I said, just. I mean, I think a lot of food, a lot of cooking is actually a lot easier than we think it is. I mean, we're all quite intimidated by you know the otolengis of the world and things mm. like that. But actually, if you just break it down, it's 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 easy. And when you really, talk, you really spoke simple. a little earlier about the star shaped fruit salad. I mean, you're just cutting out little shapes with the fruit, which will make the doing, fruit a yeah. whole lot more interesting for the child. To eat absolutely. as well. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely, and it looks pretty, and it's nice for a party, and mm. you know, it's just, it's just, a, it's a nice thing to do for the kids every now and then, to sort of flinging an apple at them. Now, the one thing I also that I've never made, and I'm actually going to make it because I make, I love to make pumpkin fritters, but you make sweet corn right. and pumpkin fritters. Sweet corn and pumpkin fritters, yeah, mm. absolutely delicious. In fact, at the launch that we had um, a couple of weeks ago at Society Bistro, um, Steph Maria, who's their exec head chef made those for us for the launch, and they were absolutely divine. And they are so simple. They're so simple, and it's just regular grocery ingredients, bit of maizena, and off you go. Yeah, and as I said, I've only ever made just plain old pumpkin fritters. I'm going to start adding some sweet corn to it now. Add some sweet corn. Mm. Add some sweet corn. Yeah, and <laughs> I, I mean, it's, it. it's simple things like veg- vegetable kebabs. I mean, it's, you know, putting things on a stick, 
kids love that because mm. they can hold it in their hand and sort of, you know, bite <laughs> it off do. the they end, love you know. They to do it themselves, mm. yeah. So, I mean, basically what you've done here is you've actually given parents, I mean, some parents are going to go, well, gosh, it's about time. Thank you. Because I, I can't, <laughs> this child just won't eat anything. And I, there's nothing I can feed this child because it's allergic to whatever. Well, but, I mean, this book true. now is going to save your life because it's got everything in it. Well, I really, really hope so. That's what I wanted to do. And I, I wanted to just show people that it is easy and that you can do it. And, you know, since I started writing the book to now, um, the ingredients are so accessible and there's so much more on offer that you can actually use as replacement ingredients in recipes um, so that you can avoid the allergens. And you know, I was a highly allergic child. My poor mother had to put up with you know, all manner of hell trying to get me onto various things to eat. And, and I really, really hope that this is hugely helpful to people. The one thing I rather liked, and your housekeeper sort of says that it's, it's boosts appetites, which some parents yes, would be delighted yes, at, Christina, and yes, settles yes. the tummies of restless infants. Two things that, that most parents battle with a lot, I think. Something called yeah. rooibos sun tea, which also, yet Roibos again, is very simple to make. It's very simple to make. An interesting thing about the sun tea is that, you know, the whole thing about robots is it's, it's antioxidant properties. Mm. And um, some of those do get destroyed, destroyed by the addition of boiling water. So, in fact, the sun, the sun tea is just a, robot, a couple of robust bags in some water that is steeped in the sun. And then you add whatever flavors you want to it, and there you go. So you just put it in the jug, and it sits, sits on a windowsill or something in the kitchen, and leave it yeah, there for about four hours. And... Or, yeah, or outside with a cloth over the top, or, you know, dare I say, doily. Yeah, you know? yes, yeah. <laughs> and, um, and, and that's it. And it just it literally just steeps into the water, warms up, chill it down, and, and there you go. It, it couldn't be easier. Now, I have to ask you, Sylvie, about Daddy's infamous lamb stew, which apparently your, oh. children, your children would eat every day of the week, given half a chance. <laughs> My ex-husband and his lamb stew, he laughed at the launch because, I mean, of course, I had to bring this up. He would make these vast volumes of lamb stew um, and dish it up to the kids night after night after night after night and they absolutely loved it and I just got to the point if I never saw this lamb stew again it was going to be too soon <laughs> <laughs> and, and also quite a simple thing to make it's not a very difficult very, recipe at all no not difficult at all and that's the thing is that's why I'd like the book to be a starting point for people so they can say oh well you know we can make a lamb stew we could make a chicken stew we could make a beef stew, we could make a vegetable stew, and to sort of just give them the guidelines so that they don't, you know, they don't have to always follow the recipe. They can just be, uh, you know, uh, maybe inspired by it and say, oh, you know, I'm going to try my own thing. I mean, not too much because I think I would like to do another book, but, you know, just, yeah. just enough so that people feel that they're getting value for their money. Yeah, I mean, just but going back to Daddy's infamous lamb stew, the thing I like about that particular recipe as well is that you just put everything in a pot. I like stuff where yeah. you don't have to measure this and put that in and stir it for two minutes and then add something else for 30 seconds and then d just put it all in the pot and switch the pot on. Yeah, you know? literally hoid, hoid in and I if like you've got that. a pressure cooker, even better. Yeah, and I like that. I don't, I don't have to faff. Yeah. I can just put everything in the pot. Me too, because I'm terribly lazy. Yeah, no, I don't like I mean, <laughs> but the thing is, you know, it, 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 as I said, it's, it's not only for kids because you've got things like keftidis in it. I, I hope I'm pronouncing that correct, correctly. Yeah, um, I mean, it, Yeah, I mean, that, that's really a, it's a Greek dish that you wouldn't normally think of feeding to children, but yet you can. Yeah, exactly, but it's something that is so delicious. Mm. Those tiny, tiny meatballs are so cute, and kids absolutely love them. And I remember, you know, looking at the meatballs in Pick and Pay or Woolies or whatever, and they were so full of full of, you know, wheat fillers. And you think, oh, I'd love to give the kid meatballs. And then, you know, to make it a little bit more interesting, well, let's give it a, an international flavor. And, you know, like, like I said about the veg tree calore, which is essentially just blended vegetables swirled together, I think we came up with the names and the, and the kind of dishes more for my entertainment than anything <laughs> else. <laughs> and the one thing I thought was rather different, which is something I've never tried, is ostrich baburti with a banana yes. custard. Now, that to me yes. is completely new. I've never even thought of making the custard, banana custard. Well, you see, one doesn't. But the thing is, is that ostrich always lends itself very well to being served with a fruit or something sweet. And banana rises. So you can actually make this lovely sort of semi-custard with the banana instead of an egg custard on top of the paburti. And I thought, well, why not ostrich then instead of beef? Um, so that the two flavors are lovely and complementary. 
Because for kids with an egg allergy, I mean, it would be a problem. You couldn't mm. have this. So, I mean, she'd be able yeah. to make Babuti now with a banana custard. What a pleasure. With a banana custard. Yeah, what a pleasure. <laughs> what an absolute pleasure. So you, you, you've, you've, taken, yeah, you've taken traditional recipes as, a lot of the time in here as well, and you've yes. made them accessible to people who are needing to exclude things because often people will look at a recipe and think, oh, I'm definitely going to make that, and you'll think, oh, well, no, it's got an egg in it or it's got wheat or it's got – you've actually taken yeah. those, those self-same recipes and redone them basically. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, a lot of them are, are uh, South African recipes because I'm very proudly South African and you know, I grew up here and it's, what I, it's the food I love and it reminds me of my grannies and it reminds me of my childhood. And other things are, you know, sort of nursery type foods, things like cottage pie and, you know, various things that, that everybody wants to eat. But it's, it, and I think that was a challenge. It was quite exciting for me to try and find different ways to make these things without including allergens. And the one thing for the breastfeeding moms or even just settling little ones was the jungle mm. juice. I thought that was such fun. Jungle juice. Oh, I had the most wonderful clinic sister um, who I desperately tried to contact for years afterwards while I was doing the book. And her name was Catherine Sutton. So if she's listening, she must find me on Facebook. And she was just wonderful. She was the most nurturing, fabulous person who helped us, you know, obviously with the, with the breastfeeding and with the kids' vaccinations and things like that. And jungle juice was actually her recipe. And um, she gave that to me, and I included it in the book, you know, as a as a little little sort of testimony to her. And it's it's absolutely brilliant, it's wonderful stuff. And we can't get away from those sick children. I mean, you you responded to mush, but I think half the time you weren't really all that sick. You just wanted the mush. But they say that to getting better. I mean, they always say chicken soup is the thing. Yes. And you've yes, got a recipe, a very nice, simple recipe in here. Yep. chicken soup. Simple, simple, simple. Absolutely. And, you know, it is the thing. And, um, you know, even if it doesn't really work, it makes you feel better. It's even if turkey doesn't really make you sleepy, you think that it does. <laughs> <laughs> That is the point about this. You actually made it so accessible and so simple, as I said in the very beginning, something that kids would be delighted to help you in the kitchen with and maybe sort of start off their own sort of interest in cooking. I think it would be fantastic. Absolutely. And as I say, you know, even if they, de- as you say, sorry, even if they develop an interest in cooking, it doesn't have to be allergen-free cooking. It no. can just be cooking. You know, how wonderful, what a wonderful hobby for a child to have, which, you know, is helpful to everybody ultimately. Absolutely. But as I said, this book's enough to get anybody started because it's so bright. It's got <laughs> lots of pictures of kids and children's drawings. Oh, and so kind. Thank you. It's I'm wonderful. I'm so proud of it. I think it's so pretty and it's just so lovely to have somebody, have someone say it back to me. So thank you. Yeah, and no, it's, it's probably the brightest book on my desk. It's, it's, just, it's just so fabulous. And the, the, let's talk about being fabulous. The publishers have been fabulous, and they've given me three copies of your book to give away to my listeners. So, for the how f- fabulous! So I have a- fabulous publishers, don't I? You do. So, in a moment, <laughs> I will give out the number, and they'll be able to call in. And the first three callers through will each win themselves a copy of the book. It's called More M O R E Allergen Free Recipes for the Whole Family, and it's by Sylvie Herford. So, in a moment, don't call now because I'm not yet in the in the place to be able to answer the phone. So don't call now. I'll give you the number in a moment. Sylvie, thank you so much for joining us on the show this evening and good luck with this book. I think it's absolutely wonderful and hopefully it'll do very well. And you said there's another one in the offing. I do look forward to that. Hi, and thank you so very, very much for having me and for all the good wishes. And yes, let's, let's hope it does wonderfully well and I hope it's helpful to everybody. I was chatting there with Sylvie Herford, and she's the author of More, M-O-R-E, Allergen-Free Recipes for the Whole Family. It's published by Human and Rousseau. It's available at all good bookstores. And now, this is the best part, you can win one of three copies of this book. You can call in now on 0892 10 2010. And the first three callers through will each win themselves a copy of More by Sylvie Herford, which is published by Human and Rousseau.